Welcome to App Design Tips. I've been wanting to share for some time now two new XD features that just got released today. And those features are stacks and scrollable groups. So I'm gonna show you how you can take advantage of these features in an existing project right now. Now, the project I have open here was created before these features were released, so I wanna show you how you can take advantage of, first, the Stacks feature in an existing project. So just to show you how Stacks works first, we have this drop-down menu here in XD, and we can see that it's just a group with some text and a rectangle behind. And we can move some things around here, and XD does a really good job at giving us some guides, showing us how to work that around, but that's not very ideal if you wanna just quickly drag some elements and change the order. So all I have to do actually, because this is already grouped and all these elements are inside, I can just click on this stack right here. And XD is smart knowing that I wanna stack this vertically because that's the way it already is. And it took this rectangle here in the background and it just made that an automatic padding background. So now if I wanted to, I can set this padding to 100 and you can see that now there's 100 pixels all around or I can change that to 10 and we have that in place. Now what Stacks does is when I double click inside of here and I arrange anything that I want, it's going to arrange that in place and swap out the other elements. If you're enjoying this video, I have an entire tutorial on Adobe XD teaching you how to prototype an app from start to finish and have that prototype previewed on your actual phone or mobile device. For my YouTube fans, I'm offering a steep discount and you can find that in the description below. And the thing that I love about Stacks too is that it's not constrained horizontally. So I can move this over to the right if I want. And you can see how that padding changes as I move that over. Um, so we can just align this to the left how we'd like. Or if we want unique spacing between each of these elements, we can click and drag individually to set this one at 10, for example, set this one at 15, and set this one at 50. So if you can imagine the box model on websites using Stacks, it's kind of like Flexbox in the way that it works. And if I hold down shift now, you can see that it's going to highlight every element. And now I can universally apply the exact spacing on all of them. Now, I wanna show you a few examples of how powerful this can be in an existing project. So if we scroll over here to the left, we can double click on an area like this. So let's say your nav menu, if you want to add more menu items there, we can just click on stack. And again, it knows that it's horizontal. And so now I can click on photos and just hit command D or control D. And now I can just call this port folio. And you can see how everything moves around uh, to fit that portfolio. So next I wanna show you this top section right here. We can see in the layers, this is a group and there's two groups inside of it. So all I have to do is click on stack right here and it already sets a padding of zero. So there's zero padding. And now if I want, I can double click inside of here and quickly just move this over to the left. And you can see how that just moved. And the nice thing is we still have that auto responsive resize and everything fits along with that. So we're resizing this image here. We have the nice cropping, automatic cropping within that image. And so we can resize things very easily and still take advantage of that stacks. Now in something like this, we may wanna use stacks, but you can see how the spacing is different between the headers and the different elements in here. So we have this grouped here and we can see that this title here has all of the elements. So as soon as we click stacks right here, XD is going to obey the same spacing that we already had. So we see that we have some spacing here that's 40 pixels, some spacing here that's 10. So XD is still gonna keep that, but I can quickly move these things around if I'd like. And another thing that's great here is let's just move this over here. If I want two buttons, I can click on this button, hit Command D or Control D, that's going to create two buttons here. And now let's just select both of these and Command G, we're gonna group those. And because this is its own grouped element within these stacks now, I can come back in here and say, I wanna stack this not vertically, but horizontally. So you can see how it magically just created that horizontal stacking. So you can have groups within groups and you can stack them in different orientations that way. And so now I can call this a really, in fact, uh, before I do that, um, I'm going to select this button right here and just turn on padding, just so I can have that auto padding in here. I'm gonna call this a really long button. And you can see here, it grew to the left too because I had this center aligned. If I had this left aligned, 
um, it would grow more naturally in the direction that we want. But we can just move this over now. And as we move this over, it's still going to behave that parent stacking that we applied in that group. Now we could use stacking for some cards like this, but we already have a repeat grid and repeat grid works really well. So we could stack these two elements here because this is grouped. We can just turn on stacking here. Um, just so if we want to group these elements right here, let's group those. Um, and we want to stack even these two items. We can just group and add a stack here. We can come over here and just even change the stacking order of an entire section, which is really handy. Now, because we have repeat grids for cards like this, we don't want to use stacking in here. We can still use repeat grid as we have before, but I want to show you the power of scrollable groups. So if we come over here into this repeat grid, it's already repeat grid. We have some new options here in the properties panel, and this is horizontal scrolling, vertical scrolling, or horizontal and vertical scrolling. So here, we just want horizontal scrolling. So you can see here, we have some new drag handles to show us where our viewing window is going to be. So I want this to be here on the left and this one here on the right. Now, because this is a repeat grid, this is what's awesome. I can double click inside of here. I have this repeat grid drag handles and I can repeat this out just a few times and it shows unique images and content for each one of them. And now, just with a few clicks, I'm just going to hit play here just to present and show you how that works. Now I can scroll this horizontally and land any card that I want. So that's scrollable groups. We can still scroll vertically within the entire canvas, but within this group we can scroll horizontally. But let's come down here now, and let's say we want to have a map down here. So with scrollable groups, if I come down here, I'm going to turn on a map image that I have and a nav icon that I have. So you can see this 3D nav icon right here that I've created. And now what we want to do is turn this into a scrollable group. So all we have to do is click on this little icon right here, horizontal and vertical scrolling. And as soon as we do that, we're going to get these same drag handles in all four corners, and we can just move this around and size it however we want. We can even use the width and height in the property panel. So we can make this uh, 1200 if we want, and 800, we can move it that way, or just adjust this and align it with the other content. Now, because we created this scrollable group, we can double click inside of this image and move it to start out however we want. But the second we hit play or present, then you can see we can move this map any direction that we want. And we can see that this 3D label here stays in place because I didn't have that inside of the scrollable group. So now we can scroll through our maps. So that's powerful in and of itself. But when you use scrollable groups within component states, you can zoom in and zoom out and have more powerful interactions. So let's take a look at that. Now all this is is a scrollable group right now. But with one magic click of a button, we can click Create Component, and now this is a component. So we have a component that is a scrollable group. If we come into our components here, and we scroll down, we can see this component that we can use other places, and it's going to have that same scrollable interaction. But I can also create a new state. So let's say this default state is zoomed in. I want to have a new state that's just zoomed out, and let's just make that lowercase. So because this is zoomed out now and I have this state selected, I can come in here and edit the location of this. So let's say I want to hold down shift and option or alt and let's just zoom that out and bring that right here. So now I have two states. I have one that's zoomed in, one that's zoomed out. And through prototyping, when I click on this, it'll automatically animate between that zoom in and out state and I still have that scrollable area. So let's go into prototype here and we'll click on new interaction with a tap we can auto animate to zoomed out and then with zoomed out we can tap and add a new interaction to auto animate to the default state which is zoomed in so very quickly here we can scroll around like we've done before but when we click it's going to zoom in and click again it's going to zoom out and we can scroll between any one of these states so that's all within one artboard. The stacking in the scrollable groups allows you to create some powerful artboards with some great interactions. And even within this scrollable artboard here, you can add interactions between these other cards here. So when you scroll them into view, you can tap on that to go to a certain artboard. Now with the stacks feature here, we have this section here that's not included in these sections of stacks. So we can always go back into our layers panel. We have this group 23 
and then we see this other group that's not inside of there. We can just select this group and even drag it inside of group 23 here. And you can see as soon as we do that now, it's a part of this group. So again, let's just stack this in any order that I want. I still can bring this to the right or to the left and move this around freely. And if I want to change that stacking order and just apply some different spacing here, I can do that very easily. So that's just a quick example of the scrollable groups and the stacking feature. You could take advantage of these features today by just updating your XD. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe and hit that bell icon for more videos in the future.